let's say that we have some particle that's moving along the number line. So let me draw a number line right over here. So that's our number line right over there. And let's say it starts right over here at zero. And then as time passes, this little point is going to move around. Maybe it moves to the right, slows down, speeds up. Maybe it moves to the left, slows down, speeds up. It might do all sorts of things. And to describe this motion, its position as a function of time, we have a function. S of t, this particle's position as a function of time, we're given is t to the third power minus 6t squared plus 9t. And we're going to restrict the domain to positive time. So we're going to assume that time is greater than or equal to 0. Now the question that we want to answer in this video is when is this particle speeding up? So when are we speeding up? Speeding, speeding up. And I think that bears a little clarification. What does it mean to speed up? Well, there's two scenarios. If the particle is already moving in the rightward direction, so if it's already moving in the rightward direction, and the way that we would know it's moving in the rightward direction is if its velocity is greater than zero. If it's moving in the rightward direction, and it's also accelerating in the rightward direction, so if its acceleration is also greater than zero, then this is a situation where we are speeding up. Now another scenario where we would be speeding up is if we're moving in the leftward direction. In that case, our velocity is going to be negative. So if our velocity is negative and we want to go faster in the negative direction, then our acceleration should also be negative. We're going to, that would make our velocity getting more and more and more negative with time. So then our acceleration needs to also be negative if we still if we still want to be speeding up. If you have any other combination here, if your velocity is negative but your acceleration is positive, that means that you're becoming less, your velocity is becoming less negative or you'd be slowing down in the leftward direction. And vice versa, if your velocity is positive and your acceleration is negative, that means you are going to the right but you're slowing down in the rightward direction. So let's think about these two scenarios. And since velocity matters here so much, we just have to remind ourselves that the velocity the velocity, remember a derivative is just the rate of change, rate of change with respect to a variable. So if you have your position function, the derivative of position with respect to time, this is really just how, what is the instantaneous rate of change of position with respect to time? Well what is change of position with respect to time? Well that is just going to be, that's going to be equal to our velocity function. That's going to be equal to our velocity function, v of t, or we could write that s prime of t s prime of t, which could be also written this way as ds dt, is equal to our velocity as a function of time. So let's take the derivative of this. Our velocity as a function of time is going to be equal to, see, 3t squared, 3t squared minus 12t, minus 12t plus 9, plus 9. So let's see if we can if we can graph this velocity function to start making sense of it. When, when is the velocity positive? When is it negative? And what's the acceleration doing in those intervals? And so to help me graph it, we already we can find the that we could say the 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 v intercept or the vertical intercept when v of zero is going to be equal to nine. So that'll help us graph it. That's where we intersect the vertical axis. But also let's plot, let's plot, let's figure out where it intersects the where it intersects the t axis. So let's set this equal to zero. So 3t squared minus 12t plus 9 is equal to 0. See, to simplify this, I can divide both sides by 3, and I get t squared minus 4t plus 3 is equal to 0. Now this is very factorable. This is t, let's see, what, what two numbers when you take a product get 3, and when you add them, you get negative 4. Well, it's going to be t minus 3 times t minus 1 is equal to 0. How can this expression be equal to zero? Well, if, if either of these are equal to zero, if either t minus three is zero or t minus one is zero, it's gonna be equal to zero. So t could be equal to three or t could be equal to one. If t is three or t is one, either of these are equal to zero and or this entire expression up here is going to be equal to zero. And since our coefficient on the t squared term is positive, we know this is going to be an upward opening parabola. So let's see if we can plot if we can plot velocity as a function of time. So that is my velocity axis. This right over here is my time axis. Time axis. 
And let's say this is one, time is one second, or I'm assuming this is in seconds. Two, three, four. Actually, let me spread them apart a little bit more just because one and three are significant. One, two, and three. And they're not going to be, I'm going to squash the vertical scale a little bit. But this right over here, let's say that is nine, a velocity of nine. And so when t equals zero, our velocity is nine. When t equals one, then this then our velocity is going to be zero. This is, we got that right over here. Three minus twelve plus nine, that's zero. And when t is equal to three, our velocity is zero again. Our vertex is going to be right in between those when t is equal to two, right in between these two zeros. And we could figure out what that what that velocity is if we like. Three, it's going to be three times four minus twelve times two plus nine. So what is that? That's twelve minus twenty-four plus nine. So that is negative twelve plus nine. So that's going to be equal to negative three. Did I do that? Twelve, yeah, negative three. So you're going to be negative three might be if that's nine, so that's positive. So it might be something like this. So the graph of our velocity is a function of time. It's going to look something like this. And we only care about positive time. It's going to look something like this. So let's think. Remember, this is velocity. This is our velocity as a function of time. Now let's think about when is the velocity less than zero and the acceleration is less than zero. So let's think about this case right over here. When is this the case? Both of them are going to be less than zero. Well, velocity is less than zero over this entire interval, over this entire interval, this whole entire magenta interval. But the acceleration isn't zero, isn't less than zero that entire time. Remember, the acceleration is the rate of change of velocity. We can write, we can write here that acceleration as a function of time, this is equal to the rate of velocity with respect to the rate which velocity changes with respect to time. Or we could write acceleration is equal to v prime of t, which is the same thing as the second derivative of position with respect to time. And so if the, the acceleration, you could really think of the slope of the tangent line of the velocity function. And so over here, the place where this is downward sloping, where this has a negative slope, and the curve itself is below the t-axis, that's only over that's only over this interval right over here. Between between this zero right over here and and the and the vertex and we get to this point right over here and then our and then our slope flattens out so this interval right over here is t is it's going to be greater than 1 and it is going to be less than 2 that meets these constraints now let's think about where our velocity is greater than 0 and our acceleration is greater than 0 well, our velocity is greater than zero over here, but notice our acceleration, the slope here, is negative. We're downward sloping, so that doesn't apply. Here, our velocity is greater than zero, and our, the slope of the velocity, the rate of change of velocity, the acceleration, is also greater than zero. So that's this interval. That's this interval right over here, where we're speeding up in the rightward direction. So that interval is t, t is greater than three. So when are we speeding up? We're speeding up between the first and second seconds, and then we're speeding up after, after, we're speeding up after the third second.